I saw this wonderful picture of a, of a ship and the sign underneath the ship said that the only time a ship is safe is when it's in the harbor, but a ship isn't built to stay in the harbor. So it loses its purpose if it can't do what it's supposed to do. NASA loses its purpose if it cannot take those risks. The founder of our space program said that the Earth is the cradle of mankind, but you can't spend all your life in the cradle. We go to space in order to explore. We are explorers by nature. That is the way humans are. We learn things from our explorations, and we bring things back from our explorations. I think we're getting a better understanding of our solar system, but with that better understanding comes a wish to, to be there, to, to go up and, and look for yourself. And the International Space Station is the next giant step. With the International Space Station, we will have a permanent presence of uh, mankind into space. And I think it's a tremendous step forward in the exploration that we are doing of our uh, universe. International Space Station is an orbiting laboratory flying 220 miles above the Earth. Imagine the complexity of the task. Space Station is built piece by piece on the ground by 16 different countries around the world and then assembled in space. Starting in 2001, Space Station is a fully functioning research outpost made up of living quarters for the full-time crew, a laboratory module for science and research, and a solar electric power plant that provides the electricity the station needs. Over the next few years, we'll be adding more new research and living modules and dozens of new support elements. So by the time the space station is complete, its solar panels will stretch wider than a football field and it'll have as much living and working space as three large houses. It's certainly a very hard task to integrate all the different components from the international partners to build one space station. When you get material built in Japan, built in Russia, built in the United States, built in Canada, or built in Europe, and make sure that all those components will be able to talk and work together, that's quite a challenge. This long-awaited project, which took an enormous amount of preparation, is now getting real. So that is the deepest satisfaction an engineer can have to, to see his dreams become reality. In the end, when it all works like it's supposed to, you know, 200 miles above your head, that's, that's when it's all worth it. My daughter got married last August. So the night before the wedding, I said, let's go out and let's look at the sky. And it was a beautiful, huge star coming over Ottawa. And uh, my daughter asked, what is it? And I said, well, that's probably a special sign, wishing you good luck in your marriage. But it was a space station, and it was beautiful to see. For every one person that goes into the space station to work, there's thousands of people that it took to make that possible. My name is Antonio Rodot. I'm Lisa Spence. I'm the director for human space. I'm an astronaut space. with the United States. The uh, space is between the project of man space flight and to see as the National Space Station program. When they see complexity, it's not just the technical complexity of what we're doing, but it's the human complexity of all the different things that, that have to come together to make this work. As uh, astronauts, uh, we are often in the spotlight, uh, but on the other hand, we don't have to forget all the other people here at Aztec uh, or at NASA, all the engineers that are working on the project and uh, the people that are cleaning the floors and all those people that are providing us the facilities that are maybe more important than the astronauts. Because each mission is unique, it's just, it's a new adventure. I just love it. I wouldn't do anything else. Sixty years ago, the same partners which are building the space station today, we were at war. We were trying to destroy each other. Today, we're working together to build the space station. 
no one country can really do it themselves. And so the, this space station is providing us a really excellent opportunity to, to learn how to work with our counterparts all over the world. There is still a difference in the political approach. We have to take care of uh, the will of each nation that are not always the same. It might have been simpler to do it with fewer partners and fewer languages. The communication between the partners can become more difficult. But the end result, I think, is going to prove that it was a worthwhile effort. We have over 16 nations all trying to walk in lockstep and make a world-class laboratory in space, 220 miles up. This has got to be the ultimate team effort. I mean, if we can pull this off and do it well, you know, that will be the trick of the millennium, I think. Think of the effect that it's had on our generation that we went to the moon before and all of those technologies that have come back down to Earth. When we work in the space station, we intend to generate new knowledge. And new knowledge leads to innovation. And it's through this innovation that we will then benefit all of humanity. The main areas that I can see right now to study on ISS have benefits on Earth. And this can be health research, heavy industry, and research that has to do with energy and our environment. When you look at crystal growth experiments and pharmaceutical experiments, cell culture experiments, without gravity, there are very different phenomena than we can see on Earth. So we can develop new processes to produce pure crystals, for example, that will help us eventually to develop new medicines for for elderly people or for children. If you could improve combustion efficiency by as little as 1%, and you're talking about billions of dollars in efficiency and all of that pollution that is decreased because you no longer have the soot production. If we can reassemble and rebuild and regrow tissue from individual cells, we have the prospect of being able to repair damaged cells that are in certain organs and tissues. And so you need to continue to push technologies for the future, and that has its own direct effect on generations to follow. Children still see space as a very exciting and a very um, inspirational activity. The youth see a lot more than we do, and their questions creates the vision we need as adults sometime to see the future. My girls look at Space Station as just a stepping stone to what can be done. And so this just lets them set their sights higher and have more imagination. You can measure how many patents came out of Space Station research or how many PhDs were granted. But how do you measure how many children are motivated to pursue scientific careers or pursue the arts because of the new awareness to their world that they've been given through a window on the space? You know, America's a big place, and so we get a little bit complacent and sort of think that that's the way you look at things. Well, it's not. And the International Space Station is a real opportunity to let people understand that there's, a, there's another way to see the world. In the space, where can you find the borders of the nations? It's ridiculous. My hope is that in the course of all this working together, we'll be able to do away with conflicts on Earth. We'll learn how to live with each other and to work with each other. And you see how fragile the planet is. And you know, we're down here warring with one another and worrying about race and worrying about goodness knows what else. It's all silly. It's one planet. If you don't explore, if you don't push the envelope, eventually you stagnate. There's just so many things to explore that Space Station is just the initial step. When you think about the advances that are being made there, the possibilities are endless. We're making history every day. In the end, we're going to have something that we're very, very proud of, an accomplishment that I'm going to look back on and think, gosh, I was a part of that. And we all know that we, we need to do it together. And I hope that we can be a model for the whole world and for uh, the future generations to come. It's a question of survival. The International Space Station is global. It's the world. It's this kind of endeavor that's worldwide and will then benefit all of humanity.